political landscape in Iowa is as open as the expanse of cornfields there. There's no clear front runner among the GOP presidential hopefuls, even though we're just weeks away from the Iowa caucuses. A recent Iowa State University poll has businessman Herman Cain at 24.5 percent, while Texas Congressman Ron Paul closely follows within the margin of error at 20.4 percent. And close behind them, undecided. Joining me now, Chris Steyerwald, Fox News Digital Politics Editor. Chris, it's a pleasure. Welcome here. Is, is Iowa wide open? And if so, are you surprised to see that after, with the exception of uh, Governor Romney, those folks have been there for six and eight months campaigning? Yeah, whoever this undecided guy is, he is really getting the job done because he keeps staying right in there in the mix when it comes to Iowa, Judge. Look, I, I, when you get right down to it and you talk about what's driving the discussion in Iowa right now, it's the fact that Iowa voters are plugged into the same national narrative. They're watching your show. Uh, they're, they're tuning into the same things. They're hearing the same things. And basically it's this. Conservatives are fed up. There's a primary within the primary in the Republican Party right. among conservatives. And the reason that you see Ron Paul's name continue to stay up there in that top tier uh, in Iowa or in the second tier nationally is because he's been the conservative alternative all along. He's stuck to his guns. And as they get fed up and frustrated with this rotating cast of characters, uh, the conservatives say, why not Ron Paul? They sort of throw up their hands and they say, fine, let's just take Ron Paul. Let's take the guy who's been there all along. Chris, how significant is a victory in Iowa if someone, let's say Ron Paul, were to win with less than 30 percent of the vote, but more than everybody else has? Well, look, if you're Mitt Romney, what you want to happen in Iowa is either to win yourself uh, or to have whomever else wins, that it can be written off, that it doesn't translate into a bounce into New Hampshire or South Carolina. If Ron Paul wins out there, you'll hear the Romney campaign say, oh, you know, Ron Paul, he wins those straw polls. He wins in these very conservative states, but he doesn't have the juice. But something that's interesting, Judge, I'll tell you this right now. We've been reporting on this today. Ron Paul's organization in Iowa has been staffing up. They've been getting ready. They've been out there. And people are saying that they may have the best ground game in Iowa right now. And as you know from your experience, right. when you get down to a small turnout like their caucuses, big organization helps. This is something that we're going to be watching very close. So Ron Paul could win a plurality, say 30 percent in Iowa. He could finish second or third in New Hampshire. Then he faces off against Mitt Romney in South Carolina, where Rush Limbaugh is going to say Romney's no conservative. Could, could you see a surprise ending here, Chris Steyerwalt? Well, there, like I said, Judge, there's a, a primary within the primary. Rick Perry, Herman Cain, Newt Gingrich, Ron Paul, they're out there vying to be the conservative alter alternative to Romney. One of them probably will be the guy, and South Carolina will be the place. Could it be Ron Paul? Look, this year anything's possible, and Ron Paul's had that steady 7 to 11 percent support throughout the process. And as people get fed up and frustrated with the front, other front runners, maybe they say, let's just do it. Let's just go for Let's go with our hearts and let's go with Ron Paul. Do you think that the uh, personal background and the financial background and the relationship to Fannie and Freddie? Uh, all of which we've known about for years about Newt Gingrich will sink his poll numbers, just like those crazy allegations against Herman Cain sank his. Well, for uh, the former speaker, yeah, there was a lot of baggage that's been unpacked out there over the years. But this Fannie and Freddie thing is a warning light for Gingrich because his advantage, his appeal to Republican voters is the fact that they've already gone through his dirty laundry personally and professionally. It's been out there. It sounds like old news, sort of like Romney's stuff from 2007 on the flip flops. Sounds like old news to talk about it now. Problem for Gingrich is once you've told it all, uh, there better not be any more to tell. And Got this it. Fannie Freddie thing is a warning signal. Chris Starwald, it's a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Judge. He's one of the richest men in the.